In my previous tutorial movie on using the gradient tool, I showed you how to create a very simple white to black custom gradient. Let's take that up to the next level, this time creating and controlling a multicoloured gradient, a gradient with multiple colours. We all like a bit of gold and glitz in our lives. Here's your chance in Adobe Illustrator. To create a gold effect gradient, you need to create three or four colours before you begin to use in the gradient. I'll put the RGB colours I'm going to use on screen. Either pause the movie and make a note of them, or you can make them up as you go along. There are lots of variants you can use. There are no exact numbers, but broadly speaking, you need a darkish burnished brown colour to use to simulate the shadow areas of the gold. One or two fairly similar gold colours. You need a bit of variance between the golds to create a shimmering effect. And finally, you may well need a lighter highlight colour. You might get away with using three colours. You could use more than four, but I don't want to overcomplicate things. Four is good for this tutorial. I'd recommend that you create the colours as global colours. Illustrator should do that for you now by default. I cover the difference between global colours and non-global colours in a different movie, and also in my book, the Illustrator Kickstart Guide, which is available on Amazon. In my swatches panel, I put those colours in a colour group folder to make them easy to find and work with. I'll start by selecting this pen nib that I've already created. Notice I'm using the Essentials Classic workspace in Illustrator CC 2018. I like this workspace because as well as displaying the new properties panel in the panel dock on the right hand side of the screen, I also get this additional panel dock that I can expand. If I want to, that gives me access to the wide range of panels that I'm used to from using past versions of Illustrator. With the pen shape selected, I'll click on the default white to black gradient to get us started. I've now got a white to black gradient running from left to right across the nib. As you saw in a previous sequence, as soon as I select the gradient tool, the gradient annotator appears. This double thickness ruler that displays various control icons when you move your cursor over it. What I want to focus on to begin with is this start stop. This is the start stop and this on the other side is the end stop. Let's go back to the start stop. I'll double click on it to show an on screen swatches panel. You may have to click the colour icon or the swatches icon on the left hand side. Then I'll click on the darker brown to apply that colour to the start of my gradient, which now runs brown to black. I'll go across to the end stop and I'll double click that. And again, from the on screen swatches panel, I'll select the darker brown. Just click carefully somewhere on the gradient slider to hide the panel. Now notice if I carefully position my cursor just below the gradient slider, the cursor turns white or hollow and displays a plus, which means that if I click there, I'll add a new color stop to my gradient. Now all I need to do is to double click on this new color stop and apply the darker gold. I'll repeat that process. and apply the lighter gold just to the right of the darker gold. And already you can see the effect taking shape in the nib. I'll add another color stop and put the highlight color in. So this is now becoming a multi-stop, multi-colored gradient. I could keep on adding color stops in the same way or an alternative technique I might just hold down the Alt or Option key and drag a color stop to make a copy of it. 
There's always a slight danger as you're working with the colour ramp that you accidentally add a colour stop that you don't want, like that. That's no problem. You can simply drag the unwanted colour away from the gradient to delete them. The small white squares running along the top of the gradient slider are the location controls. If you really want to finesse the appearance of your gradient and control the transition of one colour to another, drag the location squares. Essentially, they represent the midpoint of the transition from one colour to another colour. To finish off with my gradient, I might just drag the gradient tool just to change the angle of this gradient slightly. And let's say that's it. I'm happy with that as my gradient. The last thing I should do is to save this custom gradient so that I can reuse it quickly and easily in the future. To do that, with the object selected, I'll go back to the swatches panel You'll see that because the shape with my gradient is still selected, the gradient swatch appears in the fill box in the swatches panel. I'm going to go to the panel menu button in the top right corner of the swatches panel. Then I'll select new swatch. I can enter a name in the new swatch dialog box. Then when I click OK, the new swatch appears in the panel. It's now a named swatch that I can conveniently reuse whenever I need it. That's it for now. Like if you like and please do subscribe.